Hey everybody and welcome to another craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below if you're not subscribed already. It's totally free and would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. You can also sign up for my free newsletter over at CorinneBlackstone.com. Today's video is one that you guys have asked for a ton, so I'm going to give it to you. We are going to learn how to make some sublimation designs, and we're going to start at the beginner level. We are not going to do anything too crazy, so don't be scared. This is going to be really easy because we're just going to take some elements from a design and add some text to it, and it's going to be very, very simple. But as you learn the beginner stuff, you'll be able to advance more and more into your designing and I'm going to show you guys and we're going to grow together so it's going to be really really fun. All you're going to need is to download Inkscape from Inkscape.org and then I will put the design that I'm using down below in the description for you guys as well as the font that I use. I will link that below too for you. It's a super easy way to make these designs and like I said we're going to start beginner and we'll get more advanced as we learn together. So let's get started. I'm going to show you guys a super easy way to design some sublimation prints by just using elements that you can get from lots of different websites. You can use SVGs, all sorts of really great things that you can do. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a couple quick things that you can do. And this is going to be more of like a beginner's designer. And eventually we'll go into some more advanced stuff, but I wanted to start beginner first. So I'm in Inkscape, which you can download at inkscape.org. And what I'm going to do is use a couple different elements from other things to create my sublimation print. So the first thing that I want to do is figure out what kind of background do I want. Do I want colors? Do I just want it plain? I think we'll do a really fun like rainbow look. So let's go into my folders and find my sublimation stuff. I have everything pretty well organized for my sublimation, so I have all of my sublimation options in this folder here. There's lots of great designs that you can use, and there's a ton that you can do with these, so you'll just want to play around and see what kind of aesthetic you want to have. So let's use um, a fun background, which you can get lots and lots of different styles, but I really like this rainbow brush background. But you can actually take and make your own rainbow, you can use the rainbow that they provide and then they also have these little glitters. So let's go ahead and add a couple of these. So I'm just going to hold control on my keyboard and click on the couple that I want and let's just let's just add all of them. What the heck? Let's just play around and I'll show you guys how to add all of them. So all I'm going to do is select all of them and drag and drop them into Inkscape. Now it's going to ask me on each and every one about the bitmap import. Just click OK and it'll be fine. You just click OK. You don't need to change anything, but it's going to ask for each element that it's putting in. So don't worry. And now I'm going to just kind of move stuff around really quick just so I can see all the pieces parts that I have. And then we can go and play from there and decide how we want this to look. So we've got all these little sparkly elements. We have different colors. So I'm just going to spread everything out so that we can see all of everything that we have. There's another sparkly. There's quite a few sparkly elements, which is super fun. The sparkly elements can be a little bit tough to grab sometimes. And for some reason, this one doesn't want to move. There we go. Sometimes they can be tough to grab. And just like in Cricut Design Space, where you can draw the square around stuff and move them, you can do that here in Inkscape. So let me scooch these out. Now you want to design within this square because this is your printable area. So what I'm going to do first is line these up in the order that I want, and then I'm going to do a little bit of an overlap on them. Now you'll see how it kind of grabs on sometimes. See how it doesn't want to like sit exactly where I want it sometimes. What you need to do is up here in the upper right hand corner is unclick this enable snapping tool. That'll help you so you can move these however you want. So I won't mind to overlap a bit. So we'll do red, orange, and then we'll do yellow. And then we'll do this green. We're just going to make the same rainbow. I just wanted to show you guys how to do this with um, doing it in Inkscape yourself. And then we'll do blue. And this way you can kind of overlap them more if you want. So you can kind of do them however you want. Now I'm not sure which direction, which order these go in. I think I got these backwards. Let me go ahead and put this purple here. That looks better. And then this pinky purple. Okay, those look pretty good the way I have them. I'm a fan. So now I can kind of decide if I want to use any of these little elements on here or not. 
and which one I want to use if I want to use any of them. So again, if it's giving you trouble about grabbing them, you can just grab them with that square and move them. But these can be a little bit tough to move sometimes because they can be a little bit of a pain um, just because of the way they're designed. It's hard to grab onto them. I don't know why, but it is. So if you're having trouble, just draw that square and keep trying. I don't like that one. So if you decide you don't like something, just hit delete on your keyboard when it's selected and you can kind of go from there. Now see how this one is behind all of our elements? All you have to do is just like in Cricut Design Space, there is a move to front option. Up here at the top of your screen under path, text, and filters are these little line buttons and each one does something different. So lower selection to the bottom, we have lower selection one step, we have raise selection one step, or raise selection to the top. So we're gonna raise that selection to the top and place it over our design. I think that is really cute and I kind of want to put that over the whole thing, but let's take a look and see if we like any of these other elements better. I kind of still like that one best. So we'll go ahead and delete this one. And then again, these are a little bit tough to grab. You want to try to click them right where they have color. So these little dots are kind of hard to grab. Again, I still don't think I like that one as much. And let's go ahead and get rid of that one because we like this one. Let's say we want this gold all the way across. Make sure you have it selected right click copy and then click paste and you'll get another selection of that now again just make sure when you click on it you're clicking on the actual color or what you can do is have it selected go to edit click copy and click paste over in edit that's another option or you can use your keyboard sh shortcuts which are Control c to copy and Control v to paste so you can paste several of them all at once. I like to use my keyboard shortcuts. I just think it's a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these all across because I kind of want them all the way across. I think they're fun. And it just kind of adds that little element of dazzle to them, I guess. I don't know what you would call it. But so I'm just gonna lay these all the way across. I think I need one more to get to the other side. So I can just use Control V again. And then I just need to make sure that I grab the color. Whoops, not that. Like I said, it can be a little bit difficult to grab exactly what you're trying to grab with these little dots because you need to grab right on a dot and it's not always simple to click a dot. And if you're having trouble moving it, you can just use your keyboard. You can just use the arrows on your keyboard to slide it to where you want it. So we'll just do that because that one's giving us a little bit of trouble. So I like this. I think this looks really, really cute. So now what I want to do is I'm going to select the whole thing by drawing a big square around it. And then I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and just size it down so that it fits within my square area here, my rectangle. And then I think I want to make it a little bit longer. So I'm not going to hold control and I'm just going to pull down the little arrow down here at the bottom. And now I made it longer and you can do the same thing. You can kind of mess with each one if you want like the green a little longer and the blue a little taller. And we can do this one a little taller, although I think I need to move this one over just a hair. It's eh, pretty good, actually. So you just can kind of mess with it, see what you like. And again, you can do this with any of the colors. Just sort of play around with it, see how you want it to be, whatever makes you happy. If you want to shorten them a little bit, you can do that, too. So now that we kind of have our background set, we can do whatever we want for the center. So I'm going to show you a really cool thing that I like to do because I think it looks really, really cool. So what I'm going to do is open some text and I'm just going to use, um, let's go with out dream yourself. That's been one of my um, favorite quotes lately because I feel like everybody has dreams and let's try to achieve those. I mean, let's do it. So you can change your font, but I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see it. It's a little hard to see. So make sure you have your selection tool selected, which is just the arrow in the upper left hand corner. Hold control on your keyboard because that's going to keep your dimensions the way you want them. And don't worry, I'm going to make this really big so that you guys can see this much easier. Then once you have it the size you want it so that you can see it, just double click on it. And that brings back up your text options. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to pick a fun text. I know which text I want, which font. So, so, so what I'm going to do is click on that text selection, which again is just like in Cricut Design Space. And we'll scroll down and find the text that we want. I want this Melanie dry brush. I love this font. I think it's super, super cute. 
Now, before I do anything else with my font, I need to actually turn it into a path because I want to put an offset on it so that it really stands out against the rainbow. And I need to move it around a little bit because these are kind of spaced out a little too much for me. And I think I kind of want it maybe centered. Let's see what centered looks like. Let's center it. So just like in Cricut Design Space, you have alignment tools and like different font tools, which are all here at the top. One of my favorite ones here is this align button, and this one you can just use it to align center. Now, just like in Cricut Design Space, you have letter spacing. You also have um, spacing between the words, and then you also have the horizontal kerning, which is up, which is like the sideways, and then you have vertical shift. There's all sorts of options, and you can even do rotations. So there's plenty of options that you can play with over here in Inkscape, but I'm just gonna keep these pretty simple. I want them straight up and down, but I do want to ungroup them so I can move them around a little bit. So with Cricut Design Space, you can just click ungroup, but in Inkscape, what you need to do is go to path, click object to path, and what that does is it kind of tells the program that this is no longer a text, but it is now an image. So now what you wanna do is go to object, and click ungroup. That's gonna make each of your letters individual pieces. So from here, I can draw that little square around my word and move it. So I'm gonna draw a square, making sure to cover all the letters in yourself, and I'm gonna move that up a bit into the word dream. And then I wanna move dream yourself up a little bit closer to out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I'm happy with my spacing, all I'm gonna do is go to path, and click Union. That's again going to tell the program that this is all one piece. Now I'm going to place this over my design however I want and I'm going to size it back down a little bit and just kind of figure out where you want it to sit. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe down a little bit. That looks good. But I really want this black to stand out so I'm going to put an offset on it. Now an offset is really easy to do. It's a few extra steps than what you might be used to if you started using the Cricut Design Space offset, but it's really simple. So what I'm gonna do is from this section, I'm gonna make sure that my font is selected. I'm gonna go to Path and then select Linked Offset. You'll see this little diamond appear on your design. Now I'm gonna change my offset color to white just by clicking down on the lower section. You can see all those colors down there and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my diamond a little bit. And you can kind of make it however big you want it, it's up to you. I think that's a pretty good size. So now what I need to do is go to Path, Object to Path, Object, Ungroup, Path, Union. And that's gonna make your offset its own piece. So if you have any like weird stuff in it, like you shouldn't with this kind of a design, but you can get rid of these little holes if you wanted to. But now what I can do is I'm going to move my writing off. And you see now how you have your own little offset in there. And because it's white, it won't print. So it'll just look like an outline around your letters. So that's a really easy way that you can take and make kind of your own design using a background and some text. And I like to do it in Inkscape because it's easy to tell the size. So if you want to go ahead and check your size of your image, make sure you select everything. And then up here at the top, do you see where you have the W and the lock and the H? Well, right here where it says millimeters, just click on that and change it to inches. That will tell you how wide and how high your image is. So you can make sure that it's sized correctly for whatever you want to put it on, whether it's a shirt, a tote bag, a mug, a keychain, whatever you want to use for your sublimation print. Once you have this resized the way you want it, before you print it, it's really important to remember to mirror it. And mirroring on Inkscape is so simple that you guys are going to be real happy with this. You can mirror images a lot of times with your print settings, but in Cricut Design Space, it's real easy because you have that flip button or the mirror button after you hit make it. We have something very, very similar here in Inkscape. In Inkscape, up here at the top, you have a bunch of these little triangles. So each triangle does something different. This one will rotate your selection 90 degrees counterclockwise. This one does 90 degrees clockwise, but then we also have flip horizontal or flip vertically. Before we print, we wanna make sure we click flip objects horizontally. 
that is going to mirror your image so that you can easily print this out the correct way for sublimation. Because remember, with sublimation, you do need to mirror anything with words or if you want something to face a certain way. Now, all you simply have to do is click print and select the printer that you want to use, which for me is my ET4700, and go ahead and print it out. If you have a printer that does larger sizes, you can absolutely print larger sizes just by going to File, Document Properties, and then finding the right size for your printer over here in the page, or you can make your own custom size. So there's a lot of options that you can do with Inkscape. And I think once you really start to understand Inkscape, it's very easy to design in here. And a lot of the same elements that you're used to from Cricut Design Space are in Inkscape, but are just kind of a little bit different. I hope this really helped you guys learn how to create your own sublimation designs in a simple way. Like I said, we'll get much more complicated as we go, but I want you guys to grow and learn with me. So we are going to start with the simple basics and move on to more advanced as we go. This is one of my favorite things that we can do. I highly recommend not printing any sublimation designs through Cricut Design Space. You not only waste ink, but you also have a very limited size that you can print. So just keep that in mind. You don't need the registration marks and with sublimation. You don't need to cut around it. You can simply just place the paper onto your sublimation surface and sublimate on that. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. That will make you part of my crafty family here on YouTube. And we are going to be learning so many fun new skills this spring and summer that I'm so excited to bring this information to you. I hope you all have a wonderful day and Happy crafting!